Today we are looking at the topic of uncertain futures, growing old with faith, purpose, and acceptance. It's part of our What Weighs You Down series, and this is week five. I remember the first time it happened to me. I was visiting a club with some friends, and for the record, I was the designated driver. Uh, I was first in line and I was kind of struggling to get my license out of my wallet. The young man looked at me and said, Oh, don't worry, ma'am. You don't need to take your license out. In essence, what he was telling me was that it was quite clear that I was well over the age of 21. When was it for you? Was it the first time someone referred to you as sir or ma'am? Was it the first time you were not included in an invitation because it, they just assume that you wouldn't enjoy something for young people? Was it the day that you decided to stop counting your gray hairs? We're touching on a topic that will strike all of us sooner or later. It seems to go along with the, the topic that we uh, discussed from a couple of weeks ago about busyness and this fear of not having enough to do to fill our days. Because if we're not filling our calendars, we're in danger of becoming obsolete. We want to serve God, but it, it seems we're becoming limited in what we can do or, or what others feel we're capable. How can we grow old gracefully while still feeling useful and purposeful for the kingdom of God? How can we fight this loneliness that seeps into our souls? There's a tendency that we have to put limits on people because of their age. Scripture points this out as well. The Apostle Paul was encouraging young Timothy not to allow others to despise or ignore him because of his young age. Many immediately discounted David because he was the youngest in his family of brothers. Abraham and Sarah were well beyond the typical age to have children when God worked a miracle on their behalf. No, it was no spring chicken when he was called by God to build an ark. It seems people are much quicker to put limits on what we can do at each age. And yet God often has a different vision and a different vantage point. Now please understand that I do recognize that over time we develop physical limitations to, to what we can and cannot do. According to my doctor, my roller coaster riding days are over because of my recent neck injury and surgery. I'm just going to have to learn to do ministry without being able to ride a roller, roller coaster anymore. <laughs> However, I, I believe that we can serve God throughout the whole of our lives. We can feel the peace of purpose at any and every age. Our bungee jumping days may be over, but that doesn't mean we can't be on the bridge holding the camera and taking those awesome pictures. Now you may be wondering what any of this has to do with being a follower of Jesus. We're pretty quick, just like the rest of the world, to sort of discount people because of their age and because of what we see. Gray hair, Laugh lines, a slower gait. And on the other side of that coin are those of us who are of the gray-haired variety, and, and perhaps we feel as if it is time for others to step in and do the work of the church. While some may fear being put on the sidelines, others are all too quick to take the role of the observer. We're already claiming that scripture written by Paul about fighting the good fight and winning the race long before we're ready to depart this world. And yet, I can tell you that I simply do not see in scripture uh, anywhere where it talks about serving God for just a short time. I, I don't see anything that says that we can do the busy thing during our child rearing years and then turn the reins over to somebody else and never get involved in anything again. Now don't misunderstand me. I realize all too quickly uh, how I too have had to sort of let go of a few areas of ministry that are physically beyond my capability. I accept the fact that I now have to sort of seek out large print Bibles and, and such. But that doesn't mean that I give up reading or experiencing scripture. I mean at some point I very well may be completely blind 
but God will still need to speak to me through Scripture. So adapting to the changes around us and within us is a healthy way, I think, to strive to experience God at all phases of our lives. We have that reassurance that God remains with us now and always. As I read earlier, Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. Perhaps some of those waters and rivers are the changes that we experience as we age. But God is not finished with us. We are still loved and cherished by the Creator of the world. Think back to when you were a teenager. And for some of you, uh, it hasn't been that far. It wasn't that long ago. And for others, it's been quite a while. Remember how you kept looking forward to the day that you turned 13, and then maybe 16 because you could drive, and then 18, and then 21. I mean, you just couldn't wait to get older. I believe we spend the first quarter of our lives trying to look older, and the rest of our lives trying to look younger. Life was an adventure back then. There was more to do and see and experience just as soon as we could drive or date or be considered an adult. Perhaps we've lost some of our wonder. Maybe we were more afraid of what lies ahead than we were during our fearless days. We dread slowing down or having to pass up certain things because we don't want to be put out to pasture too soon. Jesus tells us that we do not need to fear for anything. He reminds us to seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us as well. When we as a church remember that we are here to serve God and to serve one another, perhaps we can feel the presence of God no matter our age or our physical condition. Whether we're heartbroken or lonely, discouraged or physically hurting, we're reminded that God has called us by name, and we are precious children of God. There's a story of a woman who outlived her entire family and was suffering from severe arthritis. She was so bad that to even get out of bed in the morning was a serious challenge. She had loved doing the handiwork, you know, the uh, knitting and crocheting and things like that but she could no longer even do the simplest projects. Her vision was going, so even reading was difficult. She needed around-the-clock care, and, and she was feeling so discouraged because she had felt that she had nothing left to offer. Her pastor came to visit and share communion with her, and she began to share her frustrations and her concerns. And while the pastor prayed with her, he invited her to pray as well. Now, during his visit, he had shared with her uh, some of the concerns of others in the congregation. One family was recovering from the loss of an unborn child. Another woman was facing major surgery. A man was currently in the hospital with multiple broken bones from a, a work accident. During this time of prayer, the pastor realized this woman's gift, the gift of prayer. She prayed passionately and fervently for others. Instead of dwelling on her own situation and frustration, she sent prayers to God for the care of others. She was able to realize her strength. Her faith in God was restored as she prayed for others. We may not be able to spend our entire lives doing the same ministry that we do now. But that doesn't mean there isn't something that God is calling each of us to do. And for some of us, we haven't decided to do anything uh, for God. And so I encourage you, and I know, that God calls each of us at every phase of our lives. We are at our very best when we can reveal the love of God to others in the midst of our own certainty, uncertainty. Perhaps our eyes are dimming. Maybe our strength isn't as good as it used to be. Or our stamina may not be up to par 
with what we recall it was when we were in our 20s. But God tells us to set aside our cares. Realize our passion and our love for God that extends beyond human standards and do all things for the glory of God. So what can you do at this phase of your life in this church, in this community? What's the so what? Maybe you can, maybe you no longer can handle a weekend retreat with our youth, but maybe you could make snacks for them or lift them in prayer or jot a note of encouragement as they go on their retreat. Maybe the spring fling is too much for you, but perhaps you could help stuff eggs uh, with candy to uh, help keep it away from those of us who suffer from sugar addictions. Perhaps you could, you can't work outside during our next spring cleanup day, but maybe you can help, um, help us organize the Sunday school closet or the kitchen pantry so that we're better prepared to reach out to our friends and neighbors through VBS and church suppers. Maybe you can't help us prepare for the lighthouse shelter dinner, but you could come and help us serve and maybe just meet and sit and talk with our neighbors, listen to their stories, and offer words of hope. We're the church, and our neighbors need us. God holds our past, our present, and our future, so we do not need to fear what others fear. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds as we proclaim the love of God in every way we can.